Living in a house, you probably don't have to light a fire all that often. On the boat, I do it numerous times a day between the stove and grill and sometimes needing to burn trash in remote areas. Hi, I'm Carolyn Sherlock, and on this episode of the Boat Galley Podcast, I'll discuss some tips for not burning your fingers and give you a priceless trick for getting trash to actually burn and not just smolder. This episode of the Boat Galley Podcast is sponsored by Infinity, the most trusted name in woven vinyl flooring in the marine industry. Since 2008, Infinity has offered boat owners premier flooring options proven to withstand even the most demanding environments. Each of their products is equipped with UV-stable fade resistance and antimicrobial technology, giving them both durability and style that can't be matched. Are you thinking about kicking carpet to the curb? Make the switch to Infinity and see the difference true luxury makes. Visit infinityLWV.com and use the coupon code GALLEY for 10% off any single area rug. On numerous occasions, I've needed to light something where I didn't really have the right tool to do it without also burning my fingers or something else I considered valuable, or things just smoldered instead of burned. What's a cruiser to do? Well, necessity is the mother of invention. In several different situations, Dave and I looked around the boat and tried different things until we came up with some pretty good solutions. No, we didn't use any outboard gas. That's extremely dangerous. Don't do it. We didn't use diesel fuel or even the motor oil or ATF. Nope, we used simple things. The best tools for lighting a gas stove or grill that doesn't have its own igniter are either a butane lighter with a long nose or kitchen matches. But sometimes all we could get were little cigarette lighters or book matchers. Both put our fingers in jeopardy. Just lighting a piece of paper didn't work too well. It tended to smolder rather than produce a nice flame. Then we hearkened back to pioneer days, when cooking grease was the answer. Twist a piece of paper into a little roll or use a strip of cardboard, and then dip it in some cooking oil, bacon grease, anything like that. Various times uh, we've used leftover cooking oil in a pan um, or even just our cheapest vegetable oil. Light the end that has the oil on it. And this produces a great little taper with a nice flame that burns slowly enough to keep our fingers safe, but worked well to light the primary fire. A little piece of twisted up paper towel that's maybe about four inches long You can have a a little flame going there for 30 seconds or more before it gets too close to your fingers. I've also used a little twist of wax paper. It also produces a really nice flame, but it burns a lot faster, so you have to do things quickly. Okay, now, what about when you have to light a bonfire or a trash fire? And I know that burning trash is controversial. However, when the local custom is just to drop trash into the ocean or into a ditch, we thought it was better to burn what we could. A fire starter just won't always do the job by itself, though. Many times, we needed something that would burn longer to get damp kindling going for a bonfire or coax trash into burning. And credit Dave's daughter, Sheila, for this idea. Loosely stuff some dry paper trash, like newspaper or other kinds of paper, even uh, paper towels, whatever, whatever you've got in your trash bag. But anyway, stuff it into a toilet paper roll with the ends sticking out. Again, use a little bit of cooking oil or other fat on the tube and the paper and tuck it into the burn pile with the ends sticking out. Then you can light it. Instead of cooking fat, you can also use a squirt of charcoal lighter fluid if you have any but then be very careful lighting it. Now, another solution comes from my Girl Scout days, what we called candle kisses. If you have some old bits of candles on board, you can cut them into one-inch lengths and wrap them in wax paper like a Tootsie Roll. Tuck one in at the bottom of the burn pile and light the wax paper end. While it works really well, we almost never had candles aboard, so didn't use it too often. Now, how about lighting charcoal without charcoal lighting fluid? 
While most boats have gas grills, some, including a lot of charter boats, use charcoal. And charcoal can also be great for a beach barbecue if you're in an area without much driftwood or dead branches ashore. Outside the U.S. and Canada, though, charcoal lighter fluid isn't nearly as easy to find as charcoal. Trying to light charcoal by laying down paper and then mounting up the charcoal over it and lighting the charcoal frankly doesn't work well. A much better solution is to save a coffee can or other large can and cut both ends out. You really don't need to cut air holes in the can. Just place a couple of pieces of charcoal or sticks or stones under the bottom end so that it's not quite flush with the ground so that air can enter. Then put the can on and lay a toilet paper tube stuffed with paper and coated with a big bit of oil, like I talked about for a bonfire, under the can with an end sticking out to light it. Then fill the can with charcoal. Light the little starter bit and wait about 20 minutes for the charcoal to be ready. That's gray on the outside. And then use a pair of tongs or pliers to remove the can and spread the coals out. Depending on the size of the can and the amount of charcoal you need, if you're having a beach party for a number of boats, you might need several cans. Now you can buy a commercially made version of this, okay? It's called a charcoal chimney. I first saw it in action when my dad married my stepmother, and while it works really well, I didn't see that it really did any better than the coffee can that I had for free. Okay, liability purposes, I have to put in some sort of a warning about being careful around fire, not lighting a fire near gasoline, making sure it's not too windy that the fire will spread unintentionally, or having a bucket of water handy and all that. Yeah, you are responsible for your own actions in using fire responsibly. But you wouldn't be cruising if you weren't willing to be responsible for your own actions, right? I hope you enjoyed this edition of the Boat Galley Podcast. Be sure to subscribe so that you never miss an episode. And we love when you leave reviews and tell your friends.